everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of What's So Funny, a show that talks about the funny with the people who make it happen. Now, our guest this week is so miserable, you think he's lived with uric acid buildup his entire career, stifling success and making it impossible to reach the top of the comedy mountain. But frankly, no amount of misery would stop this guy from achieving greatness. Not only is he supremely funny, he's dangerously handsome. It's Jeremy (laughs) Hotz. And of course, we have your host, a man who's been described as dangerous to those with a fashion sense and hair. It's Guy McPherson. Thank you. Uh, uric acid buildup. I, I, I don't know that, but Jeremy, have you ever had it? Uh, gout? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. He's just, he's just, I don't know, he's, he's made it sound very flowery for no apparent reason. Well, <laughs> correct. I have gout and uh, just some, sometimes it flares up and uh, then I, I limp around like a, like a privileged uh, European. <laughs> Good you know? Lord. And the giant thumb. Uh, yeah, that's right. I don't have the giant thumb. Oh, I have it in, God. I have it in the knee, which, st- which stops the leg from bending. You see how that can be inconvenient? You can't walk. <laughs> yeah. It makes it hard to have a comedy career if you can't uh, get on your knee. Sorry, that's inappropriate. <laughs> how long have you had it? Oh, you've been uh, miserable for 30 years, but how long have you had the gout? Uh, the guy that came up, uh, I don't know, about 20 years ago. Oh, I just that went long. in. I th- <laughs> I thought my oh, shoe was rubbing against the side of my uh, of my ankle. It started in my ankle the first time. Never went back there. Came to the ankle the first time. They they got rid of it with these. Uh, you know you know what you have to take steroids. Yeah, man, it's like a big deal. They got rid of it with that, and then um, it can, comes back in the knee periodically. <laughs> it's not one thing. It's another. I, I find the the. Um process of aging sam wouldn't know about this because he's a young type funny because i think a lot of it is perception and you might be thought of as this curmudgeon now but you were a young curmudgeon so it was like <laughs> that's what people don't thing. understand like yeah. yeah i agree with you 100 percent, guy you know you know me from the beginning i i have just grown into being uh, <laughs> a, a horribly bitter old man i was <laughs> i was like this as a young guy too Uh, Yeah, people were like, it doesn't make any sense. He's young and he's got everything in front of him and he thinks everything is garbage. (laughs) Yeah, I I was ahead of my time. Jesus. Right. I, 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 when I have a nap now, people go, oh, he's an old guy. He needs a nap. No, I was napping in my 20s. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I listened to jazz when I was younger. And now it's like, oh, he's an old guy. He likes jazz. Well, no, I just, I always did. I never listen to jazz, but I will listen to, uh, you know, I will, I will say that I, I listen to April wine. Oh, man. <laughs> That's All jazz, right, Dad. Yeah. Yeah, I April like, wine, man. I like the way you said jazz. I don't listen to jazz. <laughs> I don't listen to jazz. Jazz to me sounds like it's for the French. We prefer jazz. <laughs> you know, it does. It does. That's what that's what happened to the Montreal Expos. They lost the team and said, "Screw the Expos. Screw MLB baseball. We'll just listen to jazz." That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, we do go way back because I interviewed you first in two thousand, but you were already well into your career in two thousand. Now that's twenty years ago. Uh, but this is the first time you're doing the show, which is great. I mean, you're you're one of my favorite interviews. Whenever I've had the pleasure of uh, talking it's lovely to you, to hear because you interview everybody, guy. You interview uh, everybody. Like, yeah, I know you. You are the comedy. You're the guy that knows comedy on the West Coast. Uh, every for sure, no, without but question. You're, you're the Canadian. They're not, they're not all great talking to. I'll tell you, but. <laughs> It's fun talking with you, always. That's great. Um, so I am coming to Vancouver, so you can come see me again, you know. I'm coming uh, on... Uh, there's no way I'm going in a room full of people, Jeremy. I see, that's the thing. That's what I'm worried about, guys. You know, <laughs> no kidding, I, you're worried about it. But I got to get out of here because I haven't done stand-up for six months, and I, I got to prove to myself that I can still do it because, you, you know, who knows, right? I haven't... It's just the longest break I've ever had in my life. So like, where are you playing? Where are you playing? Playing at uh, Sam, remembered. Yeah, uh, you're at the House of Comedy. The end thank of August. You, Sam. Yeah, the famous House <laughs> of Comedy, and uh, I'm doing that. And they're doing a special social distancing thing. Yeah. And uh, the room will only hold. It'll be a very exclusive show. It'll only hold <laughs> ninety staff. people. It'll only hold yeah. the staff. 
90 people are, are going to come per, per, per show. And I'm going to do, it seems, the last I heard, six of them is what I heard. I, uh, I'm looking here. It's either six or seven, a Wednesday through oh, Sunday. <laughs> hey, man, I found out about it today, guys. I'm, you know, this is a scoop. Because <laughs> I just, you know, hours ago, I don't even remember the names. And it's uh, I'm going to Vancouver. And then they said... Uh, Edmonton and then Winnipeg. And those are the three. And then if it's still bad in America, I'm going to stay in Canada for a while. Yay. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not doing anything here. Nope. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, guys, I walk down the street. I live in West Hollywood. I walk down the street. Uh, I don't think I've taken the dog for a walk without seeing a guy jog by me with no mask on and his shirt off. Mm -hmm. Well, don't brag. I'm just saying you know and i didn't take pictures <laughs> just let him go well i think yeah. that happens here but we we don't have the large numbers uh that you have in the states when you say sam like i see people without masks all the time in fact me yeah mm -hmm. but we don't have 150,000 casualties no yeah yeah deaths 150,000 guys fun huh let's go I, do some comedy jeez top, top of the charts <laughs> So you're out yeah. of practice, yeah, but <laughs> but by the Sunday you are going to be in top shape, right? After six shows, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But you know, I, I really want to get back on again because I've you know I've said so many things and I've written them down. But you can't try them anywhere, you know, guy. You can't. That's what comedy is. Like if people think that that we stand in front of a mirror and work the shit out, no, it never. Yeah. I mean, because then you got to look at yourself and who wants to see that? So what we do is we just write it down. And then when we're on stage, we 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 put it in with other stuff that we're doing. Yeah, That's what we do. And, and all you can do at this point is write it down. It's and, pretty frustrating. And with your yeah. act, uh, a lot of times it's a conversation with the crowd. So there's that element. Well, too. Yeah. 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 In and out. That's what I that's what I do. So, you know. Uh, there's that as well. So you get rusty at that guy. You know that, right? It doesn't. Mm. That's the thing that that goes first. Your how quick you are with coming back to what people are saying or or initiating a conversation. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, and I know that you also take your frustrations that you feel every day, and God knows you have a lot of frustrations. Oh, well, he's and, against me. Come on, and, you've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. If I wasn't picked on by, you know, the universe, then I wouldn't have these problems. You know, do you have gout guy? No, I don't. You see? Are we no. done talking? Good. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So, so, but now you're jotting them down, but you know, you, why don't you, you can feel free to vent here. Like any of these frustrations that you haven't been able to get up on stage and, and just rail about. You know, tell us some of them. What, what's getting you in the last couple of months, other than seeing joggers without shirts on, masks? On? Well, dude, it's the whole it's the whole coronavirus thing, isn't it? You know, and what they're telling us to do in America. You know, stay six feet apart. That's a good one. Yeah. What? what who chose six feet? And how does that work in the wind, guy? It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> you know what six feet is? That's the, That's the, That's what they bury you under the ground. Six feet. That's why they came up with that one. Just say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're making it up as they go along, man. Seriously, nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody, nobody knows. knows. It came from, no, no. They say it came from a bat. I happen to know it came from a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, do you? Yeah, so I happen to know that. I happen to know that. My father was a scientist guy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he yeah. Was a, what kind of scientist? He was a, my, father was a, my father was an environmentalist. Huh? Oh. And he yeah. told you, you have it on good authority. It's yeah. a chipmunk. And the fact that he has Alzheimer's means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, I mean, it's like we're trying, I'm trying to get through it, buddy. I mean, are, how are you doing? I mean, like, it's, it's, it's horrible. Like, you, I, I feel that I've turned into an old man because of this. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you're at home and because and you just shake your fist at the world? Well, I've learned one thing. I don't want to retire, do you? Because this is <laughs> shit. I mean, you, you don't do anything. I mean, it. oh, this is really fun. Who cares? You know? Big moment is walking to the grocery store. You know? mm. And then standing in line. Do you do that in Canada, too? Do you have to stand in line at the store? Uh, 
some stores, yeah, less and less now. I go to one where I never have to stand in line, though. You, you don't have to stand in line? No, not well, the one down I mean, the hill from me. <laughs> yeah, you see, you got to stand in line here, man. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you got to stand in line in order to have the privilege to shop in their fucking store. What That's this? what's going on here, man. It's uh, Trader Joe's or some bullshit store? I don't even go to Trader Joe's. I don't Good. trust Trader Joe. I don't like him. I don't. I don't. I don't. I go to I go to Gelson's, and that's where I go. And there's a lineup from time to time. So you, f- you feel like yeah, you're in so Soviet so. Russia waiting for a loaf of bread. That I've thought that a million times. How, did you have you not thought that? Like yeah. what is this Russia? Yeah. I don't yeah. know why we go to Russia because we never lived in Russia. But we've seen all those movies where they were yeah. lining up for bread. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't remember what was going on, but they had to line up for bread. Yeah. Hey, you know, you're you're a guy, and you told me you have crippling anxiety before shows, and I know you you talk about it now on stage. And so yeah, I'm just wondering, like there's a book, a friend of mine's reading this book called Love in the Time of Cholera. It's a novel. And I was mm-hmm. thinking you should write one Anxiety in the Time of COVID. <laughs> You know, it's amazing. My shrink even said to me, it's amazing you're still alive. This should have killed you already by now. You <laughs> alone in your house by yourself, listening to yourself, talking all day long, you should be dead. That's what he said to me. <laughs> I shrink. Do you do it by Skype yeah. or something? Do Zoom? You got to do it over the phone. And guess oh. what? It's not cheaper. What the fuck is that, man? You're not That's even there. Ridiculous. You know? Yeah, it's the same price. Yeah. Oh man. My therapist, I tried it on the, uh, on zoom and it was, it was the worst. Cause it's like zoom calls, you get extra levels of anxiety cause there's like the delay and facial response. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I, I felt extra fucked up when I left. Dude, I had a birthday, like they did a surprise birthday thing for me on zoom. <laughs> well, you're I, was, <laughs> I was horrified. I was horrified. I, I, I hadn't been on it and I was horrified and there was my family and 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 other people and it was a whole gr- you know grid of them sitting in front of you and they're all sort of moving and then they all talk at the same time it's <laughs> it, it's so shitty my god <laughs> what and a it's, great when, you know what here here's the problem though when it's when they've thrown the surprise party for you you can't leave man you gotta yeah. stay yeah <laughs> that's the thing you can't go oh but it, it's nice that they still think of you are they all in Canada? Is who all in Canada? Oh, your your family, the ones who yeah, who my family, party. my mother, my, yeah, the, in Vancouver, and my sister uh, as well, and then my brother lives in uh, Ottawa, and that's it. That's mm. our family. So I'm the only uh, filthy American. <laughs> you, you. I've also seen now. Uh, when I first interviewed you, you had another dog. You're a dog guy, and when we first hooked up today, totally. I heard your your dog uh, barking in the background. Uh, yeah. and he's now, he's a, an emotional support animal. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, he's no, we actually, he's a service animal. What he does is, um, I got him a service animal card. Uh, cause when I first got him, he used to, uh, he used to sit next to me. And if someone like would, would reach for me, he would put his paw up. He's just always done it. And so yeah. I said, I, I had an accident when I fell, I was running for, <laughs> everything shit happens to me so i was running for like uh i had an automobile accident and i wasn't in a car all right i'll tell you what happened i wasn't driving i ran into the side of a parked car is what i did and i separated my shoulder and i didn't go to the gig i went the other way to the hospital so i uh have uh, it just uh, jump this dog out now and then what no it was parked and uh i just fell off the curb and uh i fell my shoe came off guy i had no chance when the universe comes yeah. against me like that, I lose. All right. So your shoe came off when you fell. My shoe came off, and then my arm popped out of the socket oh. and tried to get into the other socket, which was already occupied by my other arm. So then I had to go to the hospital. That's what happened. That's like some Three Stooges stuff. Oh, dude! I was wriggling my fingers <laughs> down by the side of my leg, and I saw them moving up by my head. I, so I passed out immediately. <laughs> come, oh, on. Oh. come on! Come on! Come on. That's what you do. When weird things like that happen, you pass out because you yeah. can't come. Yeah. And then they took me to the hospital and then I got, uh, I took the dog in. The dog uh, couldn't stay with me at the hospital. So when I got out of the hospital, finally, it was about three weeks later, I took the dog to uh, one of those people and I said, uh, they said, what is his special talent? And I said, well, reach for me. 
And she reached for me and the dog put his paw up. And I said, he will prevent people from bumping into my arm. And I got a service animal for that. <laughs> wow. Oh, so it's like yeah. a certification that he's now a service animal. No, what people do is they, uh, there's a bogus one where you can just go online and they just give you one. They're not, let, they're not letting that one through anymore. So mm. now they finally stopped that and I've got the real one, you know. And, and, that, and that's he, good. He's a help to oh. you. Oh, he's a, he's a celebrity for Christ's sakes now. They, they want to see the dog more than me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about me. I told you. <laughs> but I mean, you. I, I, I call him the franchise. <laughs> yeah. You were flying before without an emotional support dog. Did you, yeah. get, did you get worse or does this just really help when you fly? Oh, it helps a lot. I, I got way, I, planes are, you know. The, the big breakthrough for me, Guy, was I noticed uh, once I lost the will to live, I was much better at flying. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah, I relate to that. You go, who cares? What happens, yeah. right? And who Air cares? Canada, Air Canada makes you lose the will to live almost immediately. <laughs> oh, man. So, but so I, I've been all over and I've been doing my best and, and doing stand up and stuff uh, uh, in, in the past. But here you you when you see when things go bad in your life, you could always get on stage and do stand up. Right. And that makes you feel as a stand up much better because people laugh and you go, oh, good. OK, so I'm not crazy. But now there's no stand up. So stuff happens and then you're crazy. Right. And, and your see shrink tells you that uh, he surprised you're alive. Yeah, listen. Listen, the last shrink hit on me, so I'm doing better now, you know? Oh, good Lord. She did. She hit on me completely. And? No question about it. You know? Who dresses like that? Who wears that kind of clothing? Come <laughs> on. That was ridiculous. You would have been a, the perfect guest for uh, Dr. Katz. <laughs> Because you know you would always have people do their act, but I, you just do it all about shrinks. <laughs> Listen, you know I you know I don't really have an act. I just I just start talking, man. That's it, and then it sounds like my act. That's all there is to it. Because there's no act. All it is is me bitching about shit. That's all it's well, ever been. We, <laughs> Come Fair. on, guy. What a shit thing that is. What a miserable thing. That, come <laughs> on, man. It's just an old man going, fuck off. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, but Jeremy, weren't you on Dr. Katz? Uh, uh, I don't remember. Maybe. I don't I'll, know. I'll, I'll I, have to look that up. But, but, I, mean, I, I don't have, know. The, uh, I don't remember, Guy, if things like that. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, it's the cartoon show, right? Yeah. yeah. That was Jonathan Katz. I, I think so. Maybe. I don't know. Check and see. I, you'd know better than me. <laughs> Sam I don't, will would Google never it. know where to look that up. Yeah. Well, oh, I, yeah. I, having watched all of them many times, I, uh, I, I don't remember you. No, then I wasn't. Then you know. But I do. Yeah. So who's right? Well, I'm also right? an idiot. <laughs> who's oh, that's wrong? so strange. Who's right? Who's right? I don't know. I've done, I've done some cartoons, so maybe it's not the same one. It's something else. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. Hey, we got to get you to scroll down to the bottom of the page here, Jeremy. What do I got to do? And you got to do, do a do? cold read. Of what? You'll see it. <laughs> it's right there at the bottom. Guy Man 22. Oh, no, that's this is Jeremy me. You don't read that to... part. Oh, okay. Well, you told me. So what's so funny on Vancouver <laughs> Co-op Radio, from, from the top. CFRO. No, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going through it one time. I'm okay. doing my take on it. Oh, God. Okay. I thought it was a cold CFRO 100.5 FM. Okay, I got it. Okay, we ready? Uh, go. You don't Action. do it like that. That's Sorry. yeah. Action. Action. Go. What am I? What am I in? What is this? NASCAR for fuck's sakes? All right, here we go. This is Jeremy Hotz, and you're listening to What's So Funny on Vancouver Co op Radio, CFRO 100.5 FM. See, well guy, done. I can do it. You can. can you it. just need to read through it once. Yeah. Because I know yeah. you're, a, you're oh. a thespian, not only a stand up comedian, you are a thespian. Yeah, I'm a filthy actor. How about that? Eh? Filthy, filthy actor. You but I prefer the stand up. I always have. I, I yeah I I I really don't like reading other guys junk sometimes especially in comedies hey eh? I much prefer uh, stand up when it's your own stuff you know sure and just the immediate other guys don't uh, other feedback. guys don't I've heard I've heard 
I've heard from other guys that they prefer, uh, like my friend uh, Chaz prefers acting, and yeah, most of them do. But I like st- there's something gross about stand up, you know. That you like? Yeah, I do. There's something <laughs> there's something really base and you know low rent, you know. <laughs> well, I want to I mean, go honestly. I want to go back. Like you you started in Toronto, but you're from Ottawa, or or what? Yeah, it's true. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I did um, start. I started in uh, I started in Toronto because there was no Ottawa. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm so old. There was no capital of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, there is like, no there was no, there was no there was no there was nothing. And then huh. I went to Yuck Yucks and I played like uh, uh, an amateur night. I took the bus. I remember the Voyageur Colonial bus, and the bus stop was on the same street as the comedy club. And you could actually walk from the bus stop to the comedy club. And so I got off and I walked to the comedy club and I went on last and I killed. And Breslin was in the crowd and he came up and he said, did you want to do this professionally? And I said, yeah, but right now, because you put me on last, I got to go get a bus. And I ran (laughs) out of there. That's the story. That's what happened. Didn't realize that headliners go on last. That's a I, well, good no, thing it was like my that. first time. It was an yeah. amateur night. You yeah, know, yeah. that's what I was doing. I was, and then now later, you're right. You know, I never got over that. And I think that a lot of the anxiety that I have comes from always going last because you're there. And then the anxiety comes through the thing and when the other people are on. And it's like you could rid yourself from that if you were first, you know, but I've never really been first. So yeah, from the shit. first night, that's pretty impressive. Did you I, ma- maintain a good relationship with Breslin through the years you were there? Uh-huh. Good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like because that. it was always to it was always to try to, you know, he 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 leveled with me early on. He said, "I can't make you a star. I can I can give you a living." Is what he told me uh, from an early uh, an early uh, time there, and uh, I thought, well, that's shit. Where can I make, you know, where can I, where can I become a star? And then America. So that's where. And that was. So after, that's it. Yeah. And now, now look at you. And that was after about seven years you moved to the States? No, longer. About longer. 10. Oh, really? Yeah, about 10. Yeah. Wow. About 10 years. So you. And then you, I moved. You applied your trade here and then uh, became proficient, moved to New York. And I know I, that. I, what? Yeah, I did move to New York. I had to write on the John Stewart show for that a year. is I you know I I still remember that show and I was you do in- I loved it I yeah. loved that show and and it's unfortunate that it it was a syndicated program because it really hurt it I think that if it was on a network it would have done so much better you know yeah I I, I recognize that uh, he was a really smart funny guy then obviously other people oh, yeah. recognize that too but I mean just what came after that this was just a talk show he had a like a leather couch or something I, I think yeah he had a he had an air hockey table and he had a leather couch and there were cool bands on the show it was a very forward moving show and we had guests like uh peter fonda people like that you know what i mean right like offbeat stars and yeah. you were writing monologue, cool. monologue jokes and things like that no i was writing the yes, pieces no. like the i wasn't a monologue joke writer i was writing the pieces uh, and acting in the sketches and stuff. The greatest thing that happened on that show was, uh, uh, oh, this was hilarious. One day, we, one show was called off the entire time. We had to cancel one show, and I'll tell you why. Because Maury Povich shared the same studio, right? Except he was on in, in the morning yeah. or on the afternoon. And what happened was, because um, it was New York, there was a murder right in front of the studio. So they put up like the yellow tape and there was a dead guy. So no one could get into the studio because there was a dead guy and they, and they it had to take time. The jokes in the writer's room all day on that dead guy, uh, we made him infamous. That was like, it, nothing else was said. <laughs> you don't do that to a room full of writers. You don't go, there's no show today because of a murder. You don't fucking do that. <laughs> Oh my God, my God. That was the best day on the John Stewart show. Not five minutes went by before. And if you walked out into the hall, you just heard through it from an office murder. You just hear it. You just hear them say, they weren't even saying sentences anymore. A guy would just yell murder. That show didn't last long, did it? No, two years. Like two years? And you yeah. were there the two years? I was there for about a year and a quarter. 
I came in about three, three. It, it, the first season was about three quarters done when they hired me. Right. And, and was that like you just moved to New York and you yeah. got that job? No, I, I didn't. I got it from Canada. I sent a package in. Really? And then I then I had to fucking move. <laughs> I know. And prior to that, you were writing, but only for your stand up, right? Yeah. No, it was weird. Like I once I tried to I, I submitted a package to the kids in the hall show. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, they, and they said no. And that kind of soured the whole thing for me. So then I didn't put another package out for a couple of years. And then I sent this one to the Stewart show hmm. and I got lucky, I guess. I don't know. Or they didn't. I don't know what happened. Well, your I talent shone through in or the something. States. Here, I think, yeah. though, Kids in the Hall was probably like uh, they came in as a group and they had their few writers. Probably. Yeah, writers. that's probably so what it was. It's not yeah. like they were like a talk show needs a, a staff of writers. No, that's true. That's a different it was a different kind of thing. And they, yeah. Yeah. But I but, you know, I was doing exactly the same thing on the Jon Stewart show that they did on the on the Kids in the Hall show. I was writing the sketches yeah. for the. Yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. So, you know, who else was writing with you? Oh, God. Uh, who was on that show? Uh, uh, Dave Attell was on that show. Oh, oh Sam's geez. favorite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Tom Hertz uh, was on that show. Who else? Steve Higgins from uh, uh, the, the the Tonight Show. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. He, he was uh, he was the head writer of that show after. Uh, Frank left, and then who else was on that show that I'm forgetting about? Janine DeTulio was on that show. Yeah, there were there were good writers, man. Seriously, really think, good writers. I don't know if people who and I see the Tonight Show now with Steve Higgins understand like how good of a writer he is. Higgins, he is yeah. a writer. Well, yeah, he's, but like if you writer. if someone were to watch the Tonight Show now and and. Uh, see him because he's also the sidekick ish yeah he? right like, they don't they don't know the writing pedigree that he has oh he's a no he's a way better writer than he is a fucking actor <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> my god <laughs> jesus christ you know it's like weird that, t that he's doing that i don't exactly. i'm not even sure why yeah it's weird he should be running the whole thing and writing it yeah um, i think yeah but oh man. i guess i guess it's money guy i don't know i don't know Who i don't knows? know i guess it's, it's i don't really know at that point what 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 you do uh if you're the sidekick you can't be the right you can't there's no time there's no time i mean uh, hank kingsley never tried to write no way no <laughs> way i mean you got you know what writing is you gotta you're responsible for the whole thing i mean jesus christ no i think i'm just gonna joke about it for a bit here no i don't think so uh, you have to Andy really richter he he tried acting and uh yeah, he couldn't do both, the sidekick and the acting, and not even no writing. Way. Not even writing, which is more labor-intensive, I would think. I think people get used to what you are, and then if you try to do something else, they don't, they don't, they don't like it. That yeah. is true. Yeah. That is true. But uh, have you ever thought of trying something else? I mean, other than like acting? What? I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I did. Uh, we Yeah, we created a couple of things here. So, yeah, I have been writing as well. Uh, but no, I, you mean something else other than... Other than uh, if I if I was not a stand up, I would have been a scientist like my father and I would have cured gout by now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And and try being a scientist now to cure gout. No one would take you seriously. They go, oh, no, he's a stand up. No, because <laughs> it's all COVID this and COVID that. We don't have time for gout, asshole. <laughs> that's right. You're lucky you have gout. Thanks. I can't eat lunch. I can't eat luncheon meat. Do you know that? I really? like luncheon meat. I had luncheon meat had, today. Like, like salami? That uh, kind of luncheon well, meat? Uh, the other day I had salami, and then today I had uh, turkey. Like the, See, the I, can't, I can't have the... I can only have the turkey that's like the real turkey from the turkey. I can't that's have the gross. roll. I can't have it. I'm not allowed. Well, Just so you know. You can't, like Greenblatt's is the one right by the Laugh Factory, right? I can only have pastro a pastrami sandwich once a month Ugh. or else it sets it. You don't understand. Like two sandwiches would set it off the next day. Right How away. do you live? Well, you know, I don't eat that much, guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you also. That's the way it is. You also opened for Kennison, right? Oh, I love Sam. It's too bad he died. That was so shitty. Yeah, I just watched the documentary nice on him. Was he such a nice guy? Like, did you oh, know him a, at the... I, the I, 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 I was a baby. You don't understand. Like, for me, he I was a baby. 
I hadn't broken or anything. And I got to open for him and he, he liked me and he put his arm around me and he took an interest in, it was really cool, man. And then he died, which was shitty, but Mm -hmm. it was the first guy that ever, that I respected in the comedy industry that, that liked me. You know what I mean, guy? Yeah. Uh, and, then but, he, and then he, that horrible thing happened. It was he was the first guy, but I'm sure there've been many along the way. Oh yeah, but that was you know at a, at a very impressionable age. You know, right. I was 20 for Christ's sakes. That was great. I was really lucky to be able to say, "Yeah, Sam, I know Sam." And 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 when he would come uh, and do the club, he would give me you know hug me and the other guys. But Jesus, you know, it was great to have that. Yeah, yeah. And, but you opened for him in New York as well, or was are we talking in Canada too? Yeah, in Canada, because when you when you start out, when you're starting out, the, the thing that you got to really uh, the thing that you got to really work on is your confidence. And when something like that happens to you, it gives you so much more confidence. I've always been a guy that well, obviously, with the anxiety, I've been a guy that that uh, thinks very little of himself. You know what I mean? And so bringing that on stage helps a lot with the anxiety and with, you know, defining my character, but there's still a confidence level there that if, if you're not reaching, you're not going to be good at all. Yeah. It's interesting. You'd have to, you have to be confident in your, uh, the persona, the, the, the guy up on stage who is not confident, but you have to be confident in portraying that. That's the, that's the beauty of the guy. The guy is completely not, I mean, women, what do women want? Women want the confident guy that sticks his chest out. Yeah. Not the, not the anxiety riddled guy with his hand in front of his face and chronic scoliosis. Nobody wants that guy. And yet I get to continue doing stand up. Explain that to me. <laughs> it makes no sense. You know? And do the ladies come up to you after a show? Well, yeah. one lady came up to me after the show and, and she said, I think you'd make a really good father. And I said, quit hitting on me, lady. <laughs> I, <laughs> this was your shrink. I think I do it to myself. I wreck my own chances, man. Maybe right. I get in my own way. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Sam, you had a question. No, no, I'm. Oh, no questions great. from Sam. No. But I like the other guy who, uh, when I spoke with you, 2013 it was this was right after jerry lewis came up to you and said oh that was cool i love wow. your face i love your face <laughs> wow that was so cool that that happened can you imagine yeah. jerry lewis who never goes to comedy clubs comes into the laugh factory sees me and the guy who never talks to anybody grabs my face and goes "Ooh, this face and then i gotta take a picture with him a guy who never takes a picture with anybody i got it. jerry <laughs> lewis yeah, Jerry wow. Lewis, me the asshole finally found a bigger asshole, and I got a picture taken with him. <laughs> incredible! That was incredible. Oh, he was just misunderstood. <laughs> he wasn't an asshole. Was yeah, he? he was just misunderstood. You know, <laughs> like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to see that movie he made about the uh, being a clown in the. Oh yeah. Taking the people to, yeah, I heard about that. And then, yeah, yeah, never released, right? Never. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, he invented video playback. He invented, didn't he also invent like the uh, rolling cue card or something? Or is that somebody else? You mean the, you mean the, uh, the teleprompter uh, prompter machine? I don't know. I don't but know. I know that he did. I know that he did the, the, the video camera on top of the camera to play back the scene to see if it was any good. He invented that. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's a brilliant guy. Um, I used to like watching his movies as a kid. Now, not so much. Did you ever interview him? No, that would that been... never came up, eh? Because you're never. too young and he was already finished. Okay. No, I never did, but I would have loved to. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, did you ever see that one guy that interviewed him? There was a thing on the internet and he didn't want to talk to him. Do you ever see that? I and did. his face? Yeah. Oh, that, that was something, wasn't it? I thought, wow. I thought that was great. I, I thought the guy asked Me too. good questions and I thought Jerry Lewis was fine. Like I wasn't <laughs> upset with either one of them. I, 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 he, he, I don't know. He, 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 that's the way, I, you know, he, he would know he's known for getting pissy like that. Yeah. So he's just an old grumpy guy. Exactly. Like, how old was he during that interview? 80-something? I think he was, like, close to 90, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I would be... You know what? When you're that age, there's just sound in your ears consistently. You know that, right? 
Like it just sounds like someone scratching their fingers down a, a, a chalkboard when you're that old. Just, yeah! That's what you hear as you walk down the street. You ever see the expression on an old guy's face? It's, it's, his mouth is always open ah, like that. It's because he's hearing that. That's what I think. <laughs> That's your theory. Well, you know what? I want to interview you every 10 years until you're 90, <laughs> until we're 90. Uh, yeah. And, and, just, and the last one will be, why are we still alive? <laughs> just, yeah, just get pissed off with every question. Do you ever get angry with an interviewer, like with a question, or you always yeah, just go Yeah, one guy I, I won't ever talk to again, only in my life, but I'm pretty good with the press. But one guy went uh, to London or something. I think it was London paper. Ontario. He said, uh, uh, I said, well, uh, uh, he said, well, how are things going? He said, well, you know, I've had a bad bout of anxiety. I've suffered with this generalized anxiety disorder. And he said, oh, everybody has that. <laughs> So that's what started with that. Just dismisses you and right off everything of that. that I said, he just sort of belittled until uh, I hung up. It's oh, really? Time. Ever. Like, I, I how, I, how soon into the interview did you hang up? When he continued his belligerent questioning and trying to find out uh, who, which comics I really hated. It, it was ridiculous. He, he was a <laughs> terrible interviewer and he... I don't know what he was trying to achieve. I, I think he, he should have worked for like the national Enquirer or something. You know, it was one of those kind of give me some dirt kind of thing. It was all, it was horrible. It was the stupidest huh. thing I ever did. Anyway. So I said to him, um, uh, my mom is calling on the other line and I'll get right back. And then I just hung up because <laughs> I don't like to just hang up because then the guy knows I like him sitting there going, is this guy going to come back and then never coming back? Just waiting hours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I hung up on one uh, comedian once, and I feel bad about it. I shouldn't have done it. It was unprofessional. But, you know, what can I say? What happened? Well, he's just very um, clearly didn't want to do it. But if you listen to his voice, he sounded polite. But no matter what, it he would give as brief an answer as possible. Yeah, I see. And it was like, wh why did you agree to do this if you don't want to do it? Like, I'm fine not interviewing you. <laughs> I, I don't like doing interviews when the guy doesn't like you. That's what it fucking makes no sense to me. Yeah. Why are you even talking to me? Jesus. Really? Yeah. And that's what the thing in London was about. Yeah. He, 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 weirdest thing. Like, he just didn't like me. It's like they said, you got to interview Hots. And he went, no. And then, <laughs> and then the whole thing happened. You mean so I have I guess, to talk to a funny comedian? Boo. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ, whatever. Yeah. Not, not only a funny comedian, but one who is open and willing to go anywhere you want, except for uh, trashing other people, I guess. Well, come on. I mean, like, you know, who, I, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I know I know that that at that time, certainly there was a lot of, uh, you know, comic against comic stuff going on. And I just didn't I don't play into that at all. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, really, yeah. I'm really I'm really a very. Um, oh, if I. It's like, you know, the way there's cliques and groups of comics. I'm by myself. I, I'm alone. You were never Always part I, of a group? Never, 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 never. I don't do that. So um, you like everyone or you dislike everyone? Oh, I'm fine with everybody. Yeah. But I would never get cro close enough to anybody to find out I really <laughs> fucking hated them. <laughs> no way. That's how I do it. I have too much anxiety for that. But wait, okay, Healthy here. distance. Yeah. Who are your best friends in comedy? You must have... I mean, relative, maybe they're not like really, yes. really close, but guys. No, I have best like. friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I do. I have Alonzo Bowden is my, is probably the best friend that I have in stand up comedy. Joe Starr is a really good friend of mine as well. So, you know, there are a few uh, guys that are, you know, extremely close to me. And, you know, there's guys that, well, Mike was close to me, but he passed away. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's guys that are, you know, close and the guys that, that are just acquaintances. Like you're, you're pleasant to them when you see them, but, you know, if you both weren't comics, there would be no reason to talk to that guy whatsoever in your life. You know, yeah. there's that's the way comedy works. There's just some people that you would never run into unless you were both comics. Right. Yeah. 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 Any industry, I guess. I mean, if you're an accountant. This, I only know this guy because he works in my firm. But uh, right. And Americans are different than Canadians because they they're brought up differently and they have different mindset. They look like us, but they're different. And s certainly there is a certain type of attitude that I uh, that is, exists in America that I don't like at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these guys have that. And so you just avoid them.
Yeah, Alonzo's yeah. a good guy. Alonzo, he dunked on me uh, in a basketball game. Did he? I had to check him, yeah. Did he really? Yeah, he did. Got a rebound. I don't think he, can, he can't do that anymore. No. He fell off his motorcycle and broke his wrist like an asshole. He can't do that anymore. No, he was about uh, 40 when he dunked yeah. on me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he could play, huh? Yeah, he was pretty good. But I hit some baskets on him. I just, you know, not a dunker. <laughs> Well, he's six foot four. I know he's a big man. He's a big man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of, uh, you know, uh, pitting one comic against another, uh, you did both Letterman and Leno. No, I did. Now, a lot of comics had to choose one or the other for some reason. Like, you got to be on this show or that show, but you did them both. Like, how did that happen? Well, again, I don't, I don't, I don't do the cliquey thing. Oh, there you go. Right. Of course. No, I I stayed by myself and, uh, (laughs) Uh, but but it became fairly evident to me after I did the the the, the Letterman show uh, and then I did my first Tonight Show that I wouldn't be doing any more Lettermans. It's they hated each other at that time. Right? You know? Yeah, yeah. And and it, did you it, prefer it, one over the other? Like just the experience? Only for one reason. Only I could drive to Jay and I had to fly to Dave. <laughs> That's so the only I reason. Jay. Yeah. But uh, when you're less, on less on stage, it was just the same. It's the same, except Dave's Dave's uh, studio was way way colder. <laughs> well, that's good. He kept it really yeah. cold, you know, like really like almost like a refrigerator. Yeah, I know, you know you like to do your tours when the weather is really cold because it keeps you miserable. I do. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you would think yeah. the Letterman yeah. would have been yeah. better for you, maybe. Actually, I only did that once, you know, guy. I only, I only said I'd like to go in February because it makes me more miserable. And then they just kept doing it, which was shit. So <laughs> I should have never said it. Yeah, it was a throwaway <laughs> line, and then they took it seriously? Yeah, they took it seriously. Like, did you ever know the, like, you know the piano story about me? No. Oh, I'll tell you this. Oh, that's great. So I'm doing the, uh, I'm doing the, I'm doing the festival, right? And uh, Andy Nolman's, like, the, he's producing the, the one that I'm on. And he goes, uh, I said, I need a grand piano. And so they bring out this grand piano and there it is. And they hire a blind guy to tune it the whole day. <laughs> and <laughs> then I go out and he, and, and he goes, okay, we got the piano ready for you. Everything's good. It'll play like this. And, da, da, da. and I go play. I don't play. I just lean on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prop. <laughs> It's a prop. So they had the guy tuning the thing the whole time for me to leave. <laughs> oh, God, that's perfect. <laughs> and now I it's in your it. rider for every show. I need a grand piano. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's like Joan Rivers with her. She always had a big band to introduce her, and they didn't do anything for the whole show other than play her <laughs> on, and that was it. <laughs> oh, they never played again, really? Yeah, not at all. And, and just so she could tell them to shut up and that she hates jazz. That's then, hysterical. That's yeah, yeah. really funny. And then they never played again. That's funny. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's like taking prop comedy to its extreme, right? You hire a dozen people yeah. for one job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what kind of hack does that? <laughs> I love prop comedy. I'm a huge prop guy. I love it. Yeah. For me, the the pinnacle of comedy is is props. But uh, yeah. Hey, uh, you've done a bunch of. Uh, I know you've got some specials out there, and DVDs are available and stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. any are any like I was looking through the other day on Amazon Prime. They have great stand up comedy specials. Netflix wants to be more current, I guess, and so you know it's. It's iffy, but um, that's are, so funny uh, the way that you that you say it. It's <laughs> iffy. What you mean to say is most of the specials are horseshit. Uh, <laughs> that's well, what's really you know. going on there, and you know it. <laughs> My God. Let's just say I prefer the ones on Amazon Prime mainly because there, there's hmm. jokes in them. <laughs> there's jokes. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> Mainly because there's comedy in this stand-up comedy special. Who goes to the comedian and goes, what a great body she's got. I'm tired of it. Really? <laughs> Come on. So, Go to a strip club if you want that. Jesus. But why aren't any of yours on there is what I'm getting at. Oh, you mean Amazon Prime? Or Yeah, any streaming service. Yeah, I should do that, shouldn't I? I haven't done that. I sell them from my <laughs> website. Is that bad? I don't know. No, I do a stream- screaming business from there. Yeah, everybody knows where to get my shit. No, I don't want to give any money to the fucking Amazon people. Fuck them. 
<laughs> well, you just think like you sell a DVD for ten bucks, right? Like how many streams would it take to get anything like? I that? don't know. You've already, I don't know. You've already is. sunk it into the production. It's already been made. It's like. Yeah, just keep getting it to your actual, you know, fans who go to your website and buy it. I've never, you know what? I've never tried. I've never tried. Ah, good. Never. Well, I so. think you should try because I'm not going to go to your website and buy it, Jeremy. <laughs> That's such bullshit. How lazy are you, man? I'm <laughs> the one guy that should go and buy it from my website. My I, website I, that I paid for myself with my hard-earned money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I didn't make from Amazon or Netflix. Unbelievable. <laughs> I should have something on there. Hey, you know what? I, maybe I should stream something uh, uh, on in Canada. Do they you do should. streaming there? Yeah. So Prime, it, it, there's like a difference between the American and the Canadian one. Yeah, there's a like Canadian try to get Prime. into Prime Canada, and then it's like one step away from Be- Bezos. You know, you can take the moral high ground there. What is Prime Canada? It's different. Well, it's, it, well, well it, yeah, it just has a different library. It does. Yeah. Why? Uh, hey, that's a great question. Netflix too has a different library, but um, you know yeah. who, who's special? I watched on Prime the other night. Ian Bag. Yes, I've seen. It. Where, where? How's he doing? Oh, do you mean now? I don't know. Yeah, where is he? Uh, I haven't seen him in a while. He's in L.A. or he's in um, some one of those suburbs there i don't know what they're called uh yeah he's in la and but he has two specials on prime and i watched uh one of them and a lot it's a conversation with the crowd similar to what you do right yeah right i mean really really good and that's why every show is different so you see a special and then you go to see him live and it's going to be a different show just because there's different people there. Yeah, well, I do that. Yeah, so that's exactly. That's yeah. exactly what I, that's what I mean. Yeah. So if yeah. you put it on, it's not like, oh, I can't do this material anymore because people have seen it. It's going, oh, right. It's right, going right. to have some of the same material, but it's also going to be different just because of the audience. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah. I should do something like that. You're absolutely right. I should look into that and the book that you're going to write, Crippling Anx- or, uh, Anxiety in the Time of COVID. Yes, I have to write yeah. that book, remember? Yeah. And, and I mean, man, what else do I have to do? Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll figure something else. As long as you're taking over here and, and advising me now, we should really do this properly. <laughs> yeah, a lot of comics do books, right? Do they do books? Yeah, there's a lot of comics who write books and, you know, varying degrees of, of you know, like Netflix specials. <laughs> some are good, some aren't. See, books are shit sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't want to write one. There you go. Well, you know what? I'll write a book if, if, if I have to write a book about, you know, gout. <laughs> I'm going to write about gout, I the think. Cure for oh, gout. Cure, cure for gout. Yeah. I also, love, gout. I also love a story you told me uh, around the same time as the Jerry Lewis story, and that is, is when you met Rihanna and uh, oh yeah rihanna she loves me that's she, hysterical your bestie that's now? amazing well she's my I'm, I'm her favorite i'm her favorite comic apparently wow really funny. that is cool. me and then and that has turned into nothing for me so <laughs> <laughs> i really wish it would have been britney spears boom <laughs> you wouldn't have recognized either of them in person no though. i no, wouldn't have i know or, oh, rihanna was really beautiful she's very tall huh and very pretty you ever yeah. see her like in person? Yeah. No. Oh, in person, even more so you're saying. Oh yeah. Oh my God. She's yeah. just, you know, she looks like a beautiful woman. No, you I, know? I saw Cindy Crawford in person once and I realized, Oh my God, that's why she's a supermodel. Yeah. You they look them, different. They look different. Yeah. They're just yeah. so special. It's it, it, you look at their face and you go, I haven't seen someone who looks like that. And then it's, yeah. beauty. I know it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I saw Dom Irera in person. Once. Oh, he's gorgeous Jeez. in person. <laughs> oh, man. You must have been standing really far away. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, Jesus, he kills me. He's a good friend of mine too. There's another guy that I like a lot oh, in stand up. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's great. Mm-hmm. He's he's an old veteran that's been around for years. You know, he's got more stories than anybody. That guy, he's really funny. 
Okay, Jeremy, it's time for the second uh, cold read of the program. Oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he weaves them in. My God. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the miserable Jeremy Hotz, and you're listening to the shit show What's So Funny with Guy and Sam, whoever they are, on CFRO 100.5 FM Vancouver Co op Radio. Whatever that communist thing is. Shit! <laughs> and I lost it at the end. I lost it at the end. That was great. I got to do it again. Okay. <laughs> this is the miserable Jeremy Hotz, and you're listening to the shit show, What's So Funny, with Guy and Sam, whoever they are, on CFRO 100.5 FM, Vancouver Co-op Communist Radio. There you go. Hey, now, wait a second. Wait a second, Jeremy. <laughs> Co-ops are not all communists. Well. Anyway, but perfect. Okay. And I got, let me just say for the listener, uh, this is just classic Jeremy Hotz. You know, I've done 15 of these shows since the lockdown and everything. We've done it this way. And you only expect it from the miserable Jeremy Hotz that things would go <laughs> wrong. And this is... Of course. The, this is the third, not the, th we haven't done the whole show three times, but we've been interrupted twice. And so this is the third startup. And now uh, Sam had to go. Sam had to go perform at the club. You'll be performing at. Oh, August is he going to do that? Is he doing it tonight? Like, oh, damn it. I wish I could have asked him. I don't remember it. I wish I could have asked him how it is, you know, because he's going on and everything. Shit. I should have done that. Damn. Yeah. Oh, well. well. It, yeah. it, it's it's good. You've played there before. I've seen you in that very room. Yeah, not under these circumstances, though, Guy. <laughs> it's going to be different, and I haven't done a social distancing other than the internet. I haven't done right. a, a live social distancing show. I was going to do – I'm thinking about doing a drive-in in Montreal, but I don't know, man. You know? Like, I – huh. I don't know if I want to have cars honking at me instead of laughs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't know if I could handle that. Oh, like, yeah. Really? No, that's a big, that's a big difference than just you're sitting apart and you're wearing a mask in a car with the windows closed, honking your horns at the guy. I mean, you'll have flashbacks to when you ran into a parked car. You'd see. And now this, now this falls apart. You know, you think it's a joke, but seriously, the world, I mean, the universe has really turned against me. Uh, but this only started when I was one. So I had <laughs> one year of not of none of this. One year of bliss and then the rest down. Yeah. You, you, um, yeah. you know, but if you're, if you decide to stay in Canada for whatever reason, maybe there's more opportunities to perform elsewhere. Like you said, Montreal, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver. Yeah. The thing is the detoxing that I have to do, the, 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 you know, getting yourself ready for the, for Canada. Like I'm going to have to go into quarantine for two weeks and that's going to be garbage because right. I won't be able to go out and I got the dog with me. So, well, at least I got the dog. That's okay. He'll be yeah. fine. Hey, and speaking of the dog, we didn't mention, cause you said he's a bigger star now. <laughs> he is. It's, it's a he, right? Yeah. You named him Shackleton. Yes. Shackleton, the yeah. wonder dog. That's him. At Shackleton after the explorer, or the or the yeah, he was an explorer, right? Yes, he was uh, the Antarctic guy. But a lot of people think it's named after Shaq, the basketball guy, which is fine too because the dog weighs eight pounds on a good day. <laughs> yeah, he's a tiny little Chihuahua, right? Yeah, yeah, um, he's a Chihuahua. So, are you a history fan? Are you a, an explorer fan? Was Shackleton your favorite explorer? No, the thing was, when he was really young, what he did was he would get he would go on these long expeditions away from his like uh, uh, little uh, bed. He would go and he would go searching really far away, like like ridiculous for a tiny little thing. Like when he was born, he was the size. I mean, I didn't see him. But he was about as long as my shove-it finger. That's about it. He was <laughs> tiny. They'd come out looking like mice, you know? 
<laughs> I, and, and so he was an explorer and you decided, hey, because he's going on these expeditions, I'm going to name him Shackleton. But, you know, pretty much that was that's what, what, what it was, because he was far away from the thing. And then people just, and I thought, oh, look, I'll say Shaq and they'll think it's the big Shaq and that'll get a laugh from the <laughs> Americans. And it does. And when you say Shackleton, <laughs> it does. That, yeah. When you say Shackleton, of course, they don't know who, who that is. I don't really call him Shackleton much unless I'm mad at him. Really. It's oh. like having a child. You don't say his full name unless you're furious. Oh, I see. Mr. Shackleton. Hey, you know, though, here's some other names. If you get other dogs, other, would you ever get more than one dog? Oh yeah. I've always had a dog of some sort in my life. Yeah. Just, Having you, know, you, I love them. Do you know, uh, Shackleton, I mean, the explorer's ship's name, one of his ship ships. What its name was? Yeah. You know, they always name their ships, their vessels. Oh, I don't know what Shackle. Do you mean the one that got stuck in the Arctic and he almost killed everybody? That guy, that one? That one was the Endurance, but his first uh, expedition <laughs> in 1901 was named Nimrod. What a great name for That's a dog! That's hysterical. Nimrod. Is that why? They, is that why a Nimrod's a moron? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Hilarious! And then, I never knew that. And then on the Endurance, they had a cat. The ship's cat's name was Mrs. Chippy. So you could name your next dog Mr. Chippy, maybe. I don't know. Just just some ideas. Because, you know, I've given you two solid ideas so far. And now this is the third. Everything comes in threes. Okay. So everything goes in threes, yeah. man. I get it. Yeah. So so you got the uh, <laughs> your special to stream up in Canada somewhere so people don't have to I go. I got to do that one of these days. Yeah. No, seriously, you're right on that. But I have been working on this on, on this uh, series. So I'm, I'm trying to get that finished. And then I, I will look into that other thing that you mentioned. I should do that. You're right. Yeah. What is the series? Oh, I created a show and we're, and, and, uh, we're getting it to the agent. And that's when I was going to come because I realized that when that was finished and the script had been completed and everything, I was going to have time on my hands and I didn't want to sit here and not work. You know what I mean? I, then I was going to be crazy yeah. without anything to do sitting here. No. Yeah. So I decided I'm going to Canada because every time I turn on the news, all I'm seeing is it's getting worse here. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. And, and so it's that guy jogging without a shirt on. I'm telling you, man, no one listens to me. You stop that guy running and this this coronavirus clears right up. He started it. He is the chipmunk of humans. He's the chipmunk. That's right. It's <laughs> <laughs> so uh, funny. It all, it all comes back. We all get it together as we wrap up the show. Uh, I, yeah. I, After three pauses. You know, God. Three long pauses. Hopefully the editing will be seamless and no one will even know except for You're gonna you're gonna have some trouble with this one because, you know, <laughs> Sam's not even here anymore. I know. So Oh man. You're gonna have to cut him in from earlier things that he said. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? I'll just record his laugh and put it uh here when he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's an idea. But it's always great talking with you, Jeremy. I love it. Uh, so 2000, 2013, 2019, now 2020. And as you said, we're going to do this every 10 years until we're 90. Yeah. All right. We're going to we're gonna be the guys that live really long. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, COVID. Yeah. Oh, the world's going to be shit, but we're going to be here. <laughs> we, we should uh, not jinx ourselves. Let's knock on wood right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The universe takes care of that. <laughs> All right. Are there any clubs anywhere open in the States? Because I, I hear that yeah. things are in the, happening in the South, you know, yeah. in, in the, in the, in the red States, there's some, there's, there's clubs that are open and some guys are doing some work there, you know, but I, to be honest, I never really went into those areas for obvious reasons. Right. So. <laughs> and now you got a better reason. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to do that? Well, uh, you know, it's just, I got Canada so I can go and play Canada, which is clean. It's more about being in a place that's clean. I don't want to really die from this thing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, Canada. The place you yeah, left 23 years ago, now you're coming back to. Gotta. Gotta come back. No, I'm, I'm running back to get away from this. <laughs> <laughs> running God. back to Canada. All right, Jeremy, great talking with you. And uh, hope I just want to say one oh, thing before we go. Yeah. When I was a kid and I told my parents that I wanted to be a comedian, they said, well, the one good thing about that is even in bad times, show business always survives. People always need to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> what happened this time, mom? Idiots. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> 
Let me guess. There's probably no Santa Claus either. Okay. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Just saying, it took me. It took me to ruin show business for everybody. My bad luck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I can't wait to hear what you have to say when you uh, make it here in uh, at the end of August. Uh, just all the misery that you'll bring with you and spread to well, the, the first people. five minutes will be about quarantine. And yeah. you know that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think who, what comedian can come back and not talk about it now? I mean, I'll just have spent two weeks in it. I will know it inside out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, Jerry. All right, buddy. <coughs> oh, God bless you. I don't like the sneeze that I just heard, but thankfully we're not in the same room. No, we're not. Okay. And I don't, I have my mask on. <laughs> Do you? That's why. No, sorry. That's a condom. <laughs> <laughs> I get those two mixed up. <laughs> All righty, buddy. So um, come to the show if you can, eh? Uh, you know, you're welcome anytime. I'm going to be there for a few days anyway, if you want to come out. I mean, I understand if you... You know, a lot of I've already said to my fans on online, I, I will not be offended if you don't come because I understand Like well, you're afraid. You're afraid. Don't come. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I want to. But, but uh, I don't want to. I won't be offended or anything. And, and uh, you know, none of that. I'm just going to get on. I got to get on stage again. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, seriously, you can't just say to a man, no, you're not doing this anymore. That, no, <laughs> you don't do that to anybody. Come on. That's ridiculous. That's someone who's you been know? doing it for 30 years. Jail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't commit a crime, so I'm in jail. You don't just take it away. Get out of here. Shut up. Hey, I'm just looking at a calendar, and and I see uh, the Wednesday at the end of August is the 26th. I think we were saying the 24th, but the Wednesday is the 26th. Then that's when I'm that's starting, when probably. Starting. Right? All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, like I said, it came today, and I haven't even looked at these gigs yet, to be right. honest. But I know that they're going to be social distance, and I know that, uh, you know, I'm going to be extremely unpredictable, and it should be great. Mm -hmm. And go to JeremyHots.com. Is that what it's called? Is that the website? Yeah, that's what I went with. All right. <laughs> that's a good choice. Yeah. Jeremy Hots, H-O-T-Z. Yeah. And uh, you can find out. Maybe you'll put up there where and when you're playing, and then people can also buy and, your uh, specials. You know, Facebook. Uh, yeah, you want to follow me on Facebook uh, and and uh, uh, Instagram, and because I post there when I'm when I'm going to be performing for everybody. Yeah, that's right. That's how you do it with me. And if you go to my webpage, you can sign up on my VIP list. In which case, every time I'm in your neighborhood, you get an email that says I'm coming. Oh, very. That's what people do. Very personal. Makes you feel special. Yep. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, buddy. 